this is a tremendous thing. You know, let me show you something. I was talking to Brother King. They, uh, in a time like this, you get me? The one you've heard me say this, but I, uh, I don't know if you can just deliberately and perpetrate a wrong and make it. No, I'm going to show you something. I mean, I'm just, you listen to me good? You see, let me show you something, dear one. The Holy Ghost works with a person distinctly enough in any stage of life to make it if you want to. Let me show you something. Now, I reflect back on my own life. Dear one, I didn't have no they get me up in the morning and crying through the night. Save my, keep my boy, save him. Son, this is right. Let's read the word. Son, don't do it this way. Son, I, I didn't have that. But then one I can remember, there was a certain something that God put in my soul. And I don't think God was any respective individual. Uh, I remember when I was little. Dad was bottling whiskey. And he would be there bottling it up on getting old bottle on Sunday morning when I said, Dad, I do it, don't do that. You are blessed. Let's go to church. You boy come to that. Out to my going to church, he didn't come to that boy. And then think I just tore my very soul up. Then they just tore me up, you know. The very fact that he even though he just had money, didn't know how much he had. But that didn't impress me at all. It, it was the very fact of what he was doing was so obnoxious to me that the more he accomplished was impressive to me. I'm talking about something in my soul. Now, there was just as, as now, I was going to the Baptist church. I was going to the church and I had that little thing that I knew. Mama told me a few things and here and there. But there was just on that, there was enough in my soul to keep me constantly walking light. You follow me? Now, you know, under this kind of inspiration, with pure people calling your names out before God, they would be day in and day out all night long. Saint of God calling your name out. That means that you are particular when you come. Some way you don't know about yourself. Right. That God has shown us and, and prayed about. And you know, on the other side of God, you know what I'm doing. That's why I say, I'm sorry. I don't see how you can do it. If you go through that kind of, this kind of inspiration, I mean, deliberately, you're deciding, I don't know. You're deciding, I don't know. You're deciding, I don't know. You're deciding, don't you lose the fear of God. You know, do I want to tell you something? Observe from observation. Whenever I'm grieved about a thing, it's, it's, it's something going to follow it. Individual, involve, involve an individual or whatever. You know, uh, when my son was beginning to have difficulties in his experience, And at a point, he looked like he began to take it lightly, go play ball. I said, look, I think you got your dad to go out playing around and you just holding on by you want to play ball and you just holding on by thread? That moved me. That you didn't kick your near calamity so lightly. Well, do you want to say something? You might not go that far. But do you want to say something to me to carry you starting out in a hole? Devastating blow will blow you away for good. That bothers me when you when I can see your casual around the church at all. You know, let me tell you something, dear one. I know, even years ago when I didn't have near the right you had, I got in trouble with God one time. And just to look like me get God's favor like I wanted it. The one I went and I, I, I spent a year and a 
and just trying to prove to God that I'm willing to just speak myself and do it for him. It went more casual. I mean, I did one on night like this. I've been working out through California cold. I've been working way up to the field. It was a wild animal and stuff. You see him running around. Go on to the bus. Go on to the bus. Mean, try to catch the bus. Go to church. One minute the bus come out two or three hours maybe. Drive and ride the church at night. Every whole night in the week sometimes. Catching the bus. Go walking by the door all the time. I'm not going to the church. Walk back. And we're not going to run. Try to come to God. Lord, I mean being with all that I have. If you just, just give me some peace in my soul. Let me know that you accept me. You follow me, Devon? And, and now I need to go. See, let me show you something, Devon. Don't you know the devil? Don't you know when the devil has given you a hard blow in the middle of the you? It's just like having pneumonia. He knows a back set will ruin you everlastingly. Don't you know there's something that's lost? I don't mean in, in, uh, uh, in maybe in, in an individual have maybe difficulty in the struggle trying to rise up. I mean, but at a certain point, you lose something that you don't regain. You follow me? See, certain disease can strike you. You might live years and years and years, but there is something in your system that never gets right again, which makes you more susceptible to a back fit. You say, well, let me show you something. I'd be, and I still am, in fact, trying to prove something to God as long as I live. If there was anything that I had to make up, I knew that I know the Lord with the utmost. I would give up, I would give up the, the, the normal things in life. Anything I pride in, I don't need to, I don't need to forego it. Anything I try to get attention, anything, any kind of thing, I don't need to forego it all together. Just get to see the smile on my tongue, I don't need to hurt nothing. This is beyond a tremendous thing. You see, I would never, I mean, see, there was no something about this thing. And you know it. The prodigal son, for instance. You know his wife too, brother. He's look. Look. If you can come back home, you find me? If I can come back home, then we come back home. Then we have a day. Let me see if you can see it. Just if you just want to come back home. I don't care about being the call no son. I mean, that's, the, that's not even the question. If I can just come back home, I'll spend the rest of my life trying to prove uh, my, my appreciation. Trying to express my thank you. Just let me come back home. And you know I know that the way everybody is, and then I'm in trouble with God. Lord, I'll be sitting waiting for the service to begin. Lord, anything you say, I've been eating it, trying with everything that I have to digest it. That I never do anything that pertains to a life issue. I've been sitting in my seats. I've been striving to eat and to conform to everything that you even suggest or hints. See, because I will be my own self beside. I'm too far. I, I won't be able to catch up as it is. But I will run at full speed until I die. Yeah. Turn with me. Matthew chapter 5. Just, just for a few moments. Father God. We love you with all of our hearts. We thank you, Lord, that thou art keeping the world's trouble. And to those, Lord, who have perception is a manifest token that your coming is right at the door. 
There was a time it seemed that the water was troubled in seasons, but now it's a constant thing. You're trying to, Lord, awaken us for the last time, and we trust that those who are sleeping, they want to sleep with enough oil to make it when the cry is made. Because indeed, Lord, the oil shops pulling down the curtains for the last time. Now, if all the light of your quickness tonight, we'll be able to perceive a few things. Bless us and help us. In Jesus Christ's name we ask it. Direct us, Father. Amen. I have been thinking for a few days, just what is the purpose of all of this devotion and Bible reading? Let me show you something tonight, dear one. You get this. Don't you know, as I have discussed with some of the saints, I actually believe less than 5% of us present read the Bible with a conscience intent to really conform to it, what we read. Who will allow the Lord to rest us until we make certain that we're on top of it? Do we, do we read? Everyone around, we didn't try to get a little encouragement, that's good. But do one, you see, that's not the real purpose. We are endeavoring to be conformed to the image of Christ. And see, let me say something. See, this is the only way God's going to speak to you. When you pray, you're talking to God. When you read the word of God, God is speaking to you. Well, then if you just read, can you just read for the sake of reading? How can he speak to you if you're not able to perceive what he's saying? You know what I mean? And you can have the like instructions on the way. And you see, then what? We need to sit down and figure out something about this, this world of salvation. Now, God is speaking to you. God is trying to show you you. But if you don't need to run with the right thing and let the real world rest you, sometimes when you don't need anything and the scripture says, strike you, so when you just put this thing down and listen, let me see here. I can't go no further. Amen. I gotta do with this. But you read it and read it, don't care how striking out, don't stand in it, just keep on going and read it, don't have to do it anyway. Let us begin reading at verse. Twenty-five. Now as I told you, dear ones. The word of God, when properly heated, will get us to heaven. Now you listen. See, there is nothing that you need in actuality. The sun and the light will make you all that you need to be in heaven. That's it. That's the whole of the Christian life. The sun and the light involve everything that is to make us acceptable with God. Now the epistles are just comments on this. You know what I mean? See, Paul is just commenting and detailing a few things, but see, the Son of the Lord, that's it. Jesus is Son, he preached the whole of a man's spirit and what type and sort of spirit is necessary for us to get to heaven. Now listen to me. Now there are some things that are recommended or suggested in the Bible that might or might not uh, determine your eternal salvation. You might not come up to some things. You might not learn some things. There are some things you might not properly perceive. You understand? But now, that can be nothing wrong with your spirit in heaven. You follow me? You see, knowledge of things do not determine your spirit. You understand? 
You get that now. You don't learn in or grow into a good spirit. So your spirit in your heart isn't good. And it can't, a bad spirit can't make children. Now that might be possible. You just get this now. I mean, you, you can understand it. That might be possible that a person might not have a heart on a wedding band. But you can't have no bad spirit if you're not into it, kind of like your own new heart. Why? Because the wrong spirit has something to do with your intentions. When you are not into the bad spirit, you intend to do something wrong. Will it get back? You know what? Or whatever. You got it? So you can't have a bad spirit aside from a new intent. Alright, let us read this. Now, if you listen to me and recommend this and go, I'm going to cry and get to heaven. Now, just listen. Agree with I have this very quickly. Now, the way that you. which of course is a full bad enemy, is not to deal with him in kind, but you fight him by not fighting him. I'm going to show you something. Now you watch this. Things that will be a test to you from somebody else will not be a test if you are in the same person. Okay, I'm going to show you something. Somebody in the building is supervising the building. And there are 10 of us here working cleaning up. He's a brother Andrew. I want you to work in the pulpit. Now I want you to uh, go to Dr. Austin. Okay. And get the piano. Okay, all right. And when you get to that, go in there and... and and get the keys. Each one by one. Okay. And and play the mic around this way. All right. And polish the door now. Okay. And and then. Well, what about another one? <laughs> See, I can't do what a day's work anyway. You understand? So just go and do it all. Just do it. Now. If I don't resist it, it won't bother me. Just do it. Just go and do it. And if it's not gonna kill me, if I have to do too much, make it not bad with me. Maybe it's ridiculous in his demand. But if I don't do this, keep doing it, you're dead. Thank you, Lord. Wait a minute. He didn't even get it wrong. He put the money back on it. But let's do it. Then you have to do it to the phone. That's all right. Let's do it. Keep the other there. But now, when something rises up in me to get it straightened out, there goes the problem. Agree. You understand? Agree with your adversary. I don't, I'm not talking about compromise with wrong. We're talking about something altogether different. We don't mean that at all. Now, if you notice, we'll figure out right now it's further down in the study. Agree with your adversary quickly. How do you do it, man? How does it take too long? You won't do it. If it takes too long, you won't think about how long you're You won't think about how long it took earlier. You won't think about you did it too long yesterday if it takes too long. But do it quickly. Do it till you get now. Do it till you start feeling. Do it until you start equating, equalizing, and then uh, and making comparison. Do it quickly. Why? Because your adversary is just trying to fix you anyway. Many people are doing it and don't know what they're doing. See, there are many people don't know how. Many of you don't know that they're to you. The way they suggest they do you, the way they talk to you, and all that and push you, they don't know that they're just cutting you to pieces inside. You probably, they don't realize, they don't have enough spiritual judgment to realize, don't put that kind of pressure on people, don't do that, don't do that, you're rattling the powder. You understand? See, there's something I can tell you about this, and, and, and the way they tell you, just cut you up inside of them. 
the way they tell you to do it. It don't have to be fuzzy, but there's something of those, there's some, some kind of sinister, some kind of spirit that got it. That's the way they do it, just beat you up. Agree with the person. Agree with the person. Agree with the person. Agree They want evil on your job. If you got an old antagonistic foreman, you know what might get after you. Don't mess with him. Don't talk about my life and them because they might jive. I'll give you arbitration. Don't do that. You backlash. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because you're going to say something else. You're going to say something else. You're going to say something else. But go on and grow very quickly. And it only takes you about 30 seconds to do what he has to do anyway. Then go ahead. Maybe why you got to reach over one right on the other sheet and reach for another. Just go on and keep going. You might prevail, uh, get your career ready, but you can very easily lose something else. See, if you go make a word of blessing, you don't make God work in your world, but see, this is the situation. After something has pushed so far, they can't be no longer. They're trying to be nice, but why? All right. 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 You got it? And this is enough. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, because of this gospel of standing and taking, try to make a real mess of me right in the church house. I had a boss back people while I was church for years trying to make me uh, blow up or something a lot of people so it's just easy. Had them tied with they didn't recognize me and just walk around say walk around saying thank you. Preaching, so when I get to preach, I just preach, just saying that. Just preach, preach. Trying to get you to, trying to get you to make a flower, trying to get you to say something. Get in the meeting, in a public meeting. And ask questions, reflect on you. Try to get you to get out of me, lock horns with them publicly. Maybe because of the other people, Even if you know me, they got to say, if you want to buy one, you do it. Let me 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 do Let me do it. 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 Let me do down for the sake of brevity. We don't want to stop at each one of these. Well, I think Jesus is dealing with the one is, now you notice, that's why we are preaching so much on the spirit. Now let me show you something. Uh, when it said Christ is coming back for the Lord's church without spot ankles. Well, now that's what he's talking about. See, he's not talking about necessarily a jewelry free church and a proper sound church. But he's talking about a church with a perfect spirit. That's why we have a on the spirit. You understand? That's what you can't go to heaven with. That's what you can't go to heaven with. And let me tell you something, dear one. This is Mount Zion. That's why a person with a bad spirit never will be able to rest around here. You see, we can fail. Uh, they can put them where they understand it. They can use it with his dress or they can use it with longer dress. They can use it with longer dress. They can use it with longer dress. They can use it with longer 
start off with such a boom testifying and that soon is gone. You know why? Because that initial glow, if they don't really get out of the meeting with God and keep pace with life, will soon go out. Why? Because when you start telling me that you're home and then you're inside the world first and then you're going to put something out to protect the honor of this room. But God will really get that meeting spirit. You know what I mean? So I provide all of that floor taking. They will have two or three more encounters, many times take that all away. When you start to preach the door on the young and you're a verbal aspect and begin about that old pout and feeling, sometimes people don't say nothing, but say that old pout and feeling and cut to the cuts with the old silence. You mess with it, make that old things that something about that spirit in this kid, you that spirit, don't say nothing. Oh, they're so sanctimonious. You can hear? No, thank you. Would you come up? Come up. Why just I just I first day, man, stay in the room. Anything that you want them to do, they'll make sure they don't do that. They're not part of the they don't part of the But they just cut you to death with that with that little silence. And they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They they're doing. Don't tell me they want and and and, and the whole was trying to help them. Who was trying to help them? that God. But since they're not saying anything, well, I'm not saying anything. What's the matter with you, honey? Well, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not talking about anything. I'm not. I, I mean, I'm not saying nothing. Nothing. But I know something different. I don't know what you know. They got this spirit and you that this spirit be condemned of God. Sit so around pouting and going, they be condemned of God. Why? If for whatever reason, maybe you're wrong. If you're wrong, go and manifest the spirit of Christ and let Christ serve your opponent, your antagonist. What is right? If they are wrong, so what is right? But if you pout and change your attitude and change your spirit, then there are going to be two arms. My, my God have mercy. So he's dealing here with spirits. Listen to what he says now. Ye have heard that it was saved by the Lord of Christ, and I come in on the Lord of preach this time and time again. But I say unto you, whoso walked in the woman to lust after her, hath already committed adultery with her in his heart. And they will never have me preach this, but it's not nearly as hard to lust as you think it is. 
years ago, I used to hear people trying to explain this, and they would explain it in this manner. And it was all the but it didn't reach a certain spot inside me. They would say, well, no, I read my new album, I don't know that because I wouldn't do it if I had a chance to. That's not good enough. No, sir. Let me show you something, dear one. Did you know most people, when they lust, they don't lust with the intention of anything more than just that. That's how they really expect to be found in just that. And then, too, there's a certain satisfaction and a certain desire you feel feel like just lusting. Short of anything else like that. There's a real satisfaction you can get short of physical contact. And when you say it's not that, you're rusted. The very object of your lust could be exposed to you and you may never touch it, even if you could still lust. Well, why would I get that money to get away from that money? Nobody can trust. No, that would be too flagrant. You know what you want to do. You got, you got, you got the, your little uh, push into satisfaction. When a person looks along with the intention of satisfying something within them, only follow the extent of their desire that constitutes lust. You just let me show you something they want. All right, I mean, this, this is a close thing. Why would a person look continually? You didn't quite have fun by the first time, did you? Oh. Sometimes it might take three to get really satisfied. Three stars, three passionate stars. In most cases, one good one would do it, but sometimes it might take more. Jesus said, he that looketh on a woman to lust after her. Desire. Desire. The reason why no, no physical contact has to be made because the light is picking the lust of the face and the lust of the eyes. Two. Lust of the flesh, satisfy the flesh. Lust of the eye, satisfy the desire. satisfy. You got to fight not to do it. Anybody has. And as I've always told you, sex is not the only area in which people lust. But that's not the only area that most people regard. See, the Israelite lusted after quills, after meat, flesh, flesh. What made it wrong? Just because it was a little bit wrong. That's what made it wrong. Now, when the food is forbidden, it's not to lust after it. To desire is to lust after it. When you have dedicated yourself to fast to desire food, not just hungry, not just hungry, not hungry. See, you get hungry, the very fact that you don't eat. It'll create a gas, and you can recommend that you're hungry. I just say, I don't get hungry, well, I don't, but I do. And normally, I will. You follow me? And that means that to satisfy that hunger, you have to eat. But that is a mental thing that you don't assent to when you're fasting. Desire to eat when you're fasting, the 
disqualified uh, for us your whole purpose. You get that? Many people have thought of it, and it was nothing more than a physical sacrifice. Nothing more, absolutely nothing more. I mean, your clock watches, they can't enjoy the service at night. And so many other things, they're just longing. And waiting on me for the last couple of hours of fast is, I know it's an old song, I know it's an old song, I know it's an old song. You understand? This is what you're saying. So to desire anything that's off limits is lust. A hundred miles away. Yeah. And when you dedicate some time or uh, whatever to the Lord, it's off limits for the time that you have dedicated to Him exclusively. Do you hear? It's off limits. Let's go a little further if we may. We're going to hasten on. But we're going to say that of him, who's the only one going to run him, to let that door, have committed a bunch of her. Already. Already. In his heart. In his heart. And in his understanding, it's a person who cannot subject his passions almost in love that lust. Did you know that? See, your mind, for the most part, uh, tempers your passion. See, anybody here on earth could in three minutes time allow their passions to go in a frenzy. Anybody here, just through a mental process. Did you know that? same token, you can bring your passions under subjection by right thought. Oh, no. Is you? And now, if you do not do proper thinking and adjustment, bring under subjection, pretty soon your passion is going to begin to suggest to you. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Any passion that's raging in you will suggest whatever the passion is raging for. It will suggest whatever it takes to satisfy itself. You hear what I'm saying now? That's why you hear this one from all the other people who are doing that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's why people are waiting for everything else. Why? Because they cannot hear the person. That person will run through and they cannot do anything about it. So they can do anything to satisfy all the other people. They have to kill somebody else. They have to hold somebody else. Whatever they have to do. It's a tremendous thing. Right after he put up, let me show you something. Jesus is saying he will. Now, if you want to go to heaven, you will. But you have to be willing to do whatever you have to do, though. Now, that's what Gary does and cannot see. Gary says, well, if I want to go to heaven, I'm going to go to heaven. It's so hard. Not the idea of God standing next saying how hard you make it. But he's going to do something that you want to go to heaven more than you want to do anything else. Now you get this in your mind tonight. Now if, if you go to heaven, I assure you tonight that you will desire to go to heaven more than anything else. Now if there's anything you can tell more than you want to heaven, you're Now you get what I'm saying? Now you try to think about that. You think about that. The law and the prophets were to John. The says that time, the implicit, they went to it. The Bible says the violent came by force. Let you go to go to heaven, you gotta be violent. You want some time in prayer, you can be violent, you gotta take what you want to say. You know what I mean? You just gotta use this to break out the spirit. You gotta be violent. I don't care how I'm gonna have it. I'm gonna go to God. I'm gonna go to the church. Be violent. Why? Because you have such strong resistance. You gotta be violent. I don't mean it's just that physical violence, but you got to do something to get over the combination. The Bible says a violent thing is not for it. You don't just sit back waiting for the other guy to win. 
You got the power to believe. You got the power to believe. This is the strongest resistance. The Bible is in the air. It will give you power by every house, but not by force. The Bible said the violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. I told you about the old lady who was sick so long and fussy and touchy and everything else and people just couldn't get out of the water. She claimed this Sandy for years. And she woke up after about 12 years. And Sandy said that people can build up a bad spirit. They don't even know it. They gave her heart that people won't take time to defend their own spirit. And she saw that this spirit is not a ghost. First, the spirit can't take her spirit. It's not a God. Woman with about 87 pounds, I understand. And it says she, when she saw herself as she stood before God, she prayed so violently that she shook that bed with her feeble body. And he thought that she would kill herself because of her, the intensity of her praying. But he said, when he broke through that day and got victory, never again, it said that from that time to the day he did, they didn't see him manifest another bad spirit. Not one time anymore. Not one time. They didn't provoke her. Whatever they did was all right. There was no more complaint. There was nothing. From that very day, from that very moment, she never, they never saw a complaint, a bad spirit, a fussy spirit after that. If they changed the bed, it was alright, they didn't change it, it was alright. But the floor, it was fixed right, it was cold, whatever it was, it was perfectly alright. Well, she had so much peace in her soul, and nothing else in the world anymore. Now, you know, why don't you make such a commitment, so you don't want to try it. Now, possibly things were worse after that time than they ever had been before. You follow me? But God did that to prove her. But then God said, you know, God is only Lord. And let me tell you something, Lord. When you make a confirmation to God, and the God comes real hard, don't you know if you resist Him, that we can see Him? See, let me tell you something. When God comes real forward and God at you, He's taking a real big risk. He really wants to bring you with Him, son. We need to bring this touch. We need to bring this touch. You don't want to this is what people don't understand. See, when the world does all they can do to provoke your own attention, and you stand in your way, you can have one less person in the world. Come on, man. So you know, look at that guy. That's what they just got the box ring. I got to come out here and just throw it, watch it. Got to come out and bang at your heart right here. That guy ain't going out nowhere. He's not going out nothing. I'm waiting to him. You took your very best punch. You can't even have something to hold over you anymore. He threw a big punch and hit your hand on himself, and he just took the right your hand and hit the Lord. Same thing about the devil. When he threw his best punch and you just absorbed him, that's all. He has nothing left beyond that. So he all he can do is talk. Like you know I do. Let's go to the floor. I want to get this right quickly if we may. Right here in the field of me. What do you mean? Now, it could be that uh, socializing, clean socializing with your friends has been your downfall. Right. You understand? You know, there's nothing wrong with socializing with social beings. But it could be that when you're downfall, you're sitting around your friends' eyes and talking to you, and why are you talking to you using scripture? But that always means you like. Let that was the other day. So we don't have any to come up. But I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't care. If that was me, you could be lost. It might leave you with nothing but Jesus, but at least you're not bad. You want to give me that song? It doesn't mean much. You should be my friend. You don't have to go to bed. You can turn the horse around and play around. Amen. May God help us. So we should be mourning anyway. All right. Let me see. A little further. Problems of the day that go on up. Thy hand should perish. And now that thy whole life should be cast into hell. And if thy whole life will be cut it off. And cast it from me. For it is profitable for me. 
They want to know me to finish. And now that my own world to be cast in the hell, I'm going to tell you one. Jesus is It is best for you to be a woman who is not a woman of divorcement. But I feel like I'm a woman who is a woman of life. Say you don't have a fornication. That's for any other call. Call for the committed adultery. And who's going to marry a woman who is divorced? Committed adultery. Who put away for something other than that? Again! You have heard that it's been said by them of old time. That is not for us, my master. But she'll perform unto the Lord my oath. But I said, I swear not at all. Not by him, for his God's throne. Not by him, for his God's footstool. Not by him, for the in the city of the great king. Not by shall thou swear by the dead, because thou canst not. By the way, that ain't in it. My eyes are feeling it. By the way, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communities be lazy. Lazy, but what does it mean that become a people? Let me know this. That when a son of God says something, Brother Cam said a few moments ago, that's enough. If you say the thing about it, you cannot add anything more secure to your world than this. I promise I will. Yeah. I, 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 I swear I'll get to you. You ain't got to do all that. <laughs> Why? The very thing that you say the same thing, that's what you find. That's not true. That's enough. That's enough. No. That's, the, that's all you need to do. You don't raise your right hand, right hand, right hand, right hand. No, you ain't got to do all that. You think when you say yes, yeah, that's it. You still have to think about, okay, I don't know about that anymore. You want to uh, sign a lot of papers and, and, and get on your hands and all that. Just, if you say yes, that's enough. You still have to think about, that's clear. So if it's sometime before 12 o'clock, I'll see you. <laughs> I ain't going to sleep. It'll be my mother. Come on. 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 You still have to think about it. Brother can't say it. If Brother can't say he saw it, then tell me that's good. That's good enough for me. Yeah, I can tell like I thought. But don't be wrong. <laughs> don't be wrong. <laughs> don't be wrong. Don't miss it. Don't tell me to say. See, it's too serious. See, I'm going to tell you about Satan. See, when a saint of God says something, brother, that's nothing. When a saint of God says something, that is final. That seals it. Nobody should not be around here to make excuses for uh, a lack of uh, negligence on the part of a friend of God. Can't do it, so I can't do it. Can't come away and fix it? No, so I can't and fix it. Whatever the situation is, don't be so quick to make a commitment. See, because otherwise when you get ready to testify, it will go for a Yankee by the coat tail, maybe. <laughs> and you'll go, oh, it's Saturday. <laughs> I was supposed to be a <laughs> Come on, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. I see pity. Some people have been so negligent that they don't even pay that any attention anymore. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible for a saint and a sanctified saint of God? Isn't that something? Your word is better than what they leave and open in. Did you know that? It's better than what they leave open. Amen. Well, Lord. You heard that it has been said, and I believe in it two for two. But I tell you that you resist not evil. Now this is this is this is what I'm trying to get to. Resist 
not evil. You know why? Because you will you, you will strive. You follow me? See, when you begin to resist it, you're gonna have a tongue of war. If you resist it and you pull again, you will pull again. And you have a seesaw. See, resist not evil. You know a person might be doing you a wrong. You follow me? Don't resist it in kind. The Bible says, I love the way. You don't resist it in opposite. You follow me? You resist it by being good to do what despitefully use you. What did Jesus say? Let me show you something here. You get this tonight, please. He said it is so important and essential and necessary that you keep your spirit right that it is better to do whatever you want to do. And did even better than you want to try to explain. So if you really could to some degree put up a little shell. But just to make sure you don't put your spirit up on the line, don't even resist it. Amen. Don't even really do what you could do. Stay on the safe side of Jesus might spit the cloud just when you wrinkles. See some of you are going to right, going to insist on them right. Well, you know, you can't wait about five minutes trying to uh, ring over them and hoping that they'll see themselves pretty soon. Sometimes you just have to let them have their way. Sometimes they think if they're all right, they're all, they're all right. Well, you just have to let them go and God over them. Resist not evil. Oh, my God bless. Listen. Now, people are going to be evil. It might come from any source. It, let them go on and save your spirit. And save God as a spirit. You follow me? Save God as a spirit. And he goes on to further explain it in the next verse, I believe. But I say unto you, that is this not evil, whose lips shall smile you on the right cheek, turn to him the other all so. Well, can I grab him and hold, just hold him, don't hit him, just hold him. Just squeeze him real tight. No, do like Jesus said. That's the only safe thing to do. To make sure you're not, you didn't get mad. Give him another shot at it. <laughs> Even to make sure that you're not in anger, man, master. Well, he talked about that, what Jesus taught. All right, we go to the church, you go home, but you, this is what you need to know, I tell you. This is what you need to know. Then go home right now because you, have, you know it so you can quote it and all so so well. But I tell you what, you need, you need to go home and hold yourself one time and write. Listen, and if any man will sue me and hold and take away thy coat, there we go. Let him have your cloak also. But you mess around and try to defend your coat. And your light will the case. But you might lose something else. See, let me show you something to do. When you contend too hard for something and you lose, it has a lot to do. Because you have to win. It means the time to hurt the time and turn the winners if you're not careful. Let me show you something. Even, let me show you something. Even if you have a contention, if that come out a difference between me and this brother, and let's take it for the minister. I'm not saying that there are some situations that the minister that might need to settle for the benefit of peace. But if you're thinking to, to try to win, and the minister's not going to throw, you got someone here. Are you better hear me that? If you ever want to take something to somebody for arbitration and you lose the case, you're going to have about one 
had not seen a future. Why? Because you went there to begin with because you thought you were right and to more or less get there and you what you're taking to expose him. And you're going to be embarrassed to be wrong. And you're going to be convinced to say, well, you're going to end up doing it and continue to do it and that you're right. So why did you take him in the first place? No, but you want to run the race to me. You, you, you come back to me and answer. What you come for? Well, I'll come for you. I'll come for you. Man. So when you find him, you're going to come back on this. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And then you're going to come to him. And you're going to come to him. And you're going to come to him. And you're going to come to him. Oh, you got to respect the person. You're going to then. Because by the end of the last period, you can't. You're going to win. You're going to win. You're going to see what's right about it. You're going to see what's right about it. You're going to win. And the more you win, Try to keep on doing something to win, regardless who rules, contrary to what you wishes. All right. Who's the last second to go now? Go with him. Twain. Look back up. Just previous to where I began meeting. Therefore, if I bring my wit together. And there we are, and I'm going to ask my wife to be, let me do it. Don't try to pull the house. Don't try to pull the house. Let me do it. That's why you can't help us in the country. That's why people have their own traversing into the progressing. Trying to pull the house. And you know what you're doing? Dying. Dying by the ways. What about your spirit tonight? Have you got enough more of in you to do this? See, this is Jesus was preaching a sanctified standard. Some people, I'm afraid, are not prepared to go to the second mile. And we don't even feel that it's necessary. Some people are not prepared to refrain from resisting evil. Don't you know the world's second mile? You can't be provoked with the first one. Do you know that? This is what's necessary to get to heaven. God's got it for you. Shall we stand? God's got it for you. People say that in my world, I'm going to try to do No, no, no. Your year should have been so steadfast and so up to date. Lord, bless we pray. Lord God, help us we pray. Oh, God, get us ready. Amen, amen. Blessed Father. The ones know their own selves. Some people, and this is a tragedy, don't know how far they're capable of going. They don't. Some people don't even, uh, you know, I guess as detailed as I try to be, don't know even what the second mile is. Don't know what turning your cheek means. They want you not likely to turn a, another cheek if you're fussing before you get to the first one. Some people begin on the fence before you even get to him the first time. All right, then, now we 
when I'm making a house that I know, when I really it's almost like pretty soon when people begin to pile up on you. God gonna have to have it happen to us so we can get strong and be perfected. So when I know it's gonna pile up on us. Be you ready? Now let me tell you this now. But this is gonna be so now I love you. So we say the sum of seal consecration is to burn the house freely like a dog and drink the wine of freely. That's the sum of seal consecration. <laughs> Amen. Are you willing? All right, then you can trust that you're satisfied. And I mean, we're only a few blocks, so we'll see if you can make it a couple miles, maybe for a night, so some of you might have to. Second mile, third mile. See how easily you can agree with your adversary. One verse I've given up all. I have given up all to my Savior. dismissal prayer if those you may let them know that we can go pray and asking God to undertake if there's any very special words that you have to who can say the Lord tonight you want to say to agree with you Sister Green alright alright very special words and then for the Lord don't over here Sister Donna, unspoken. Sister Echoes. All right. Sister Russell. All right. Is anyone 
the same section. Brother Moss. Right. Brother Kevin. Sister Rachel. Sister Page. Let's let's move on, little baby. Let all others be made by the uplifting of your hand. God sees every uplifted hand. We're going to pray. Take this off.